Hey, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to talk about how Simone Biles is able to do one of, if not the most difficult vault in the world right now. Hi, if you don't know me, my name is Bray. I'm a former elite All-American gymnast and a current gymnastics coach and judge, and I'm going to break down Simone Biles' amazing Yurichinko double pike. All right, so let's get into this video. First, we're going to watch it in regular motion, and then we're going to watch it slow down, and I'm going to break down the skill and technique and all of that. Okay, here it is in normal motion. Okay, so obviously just... <laughs> it's honestly so funny to me how hard this ball is. Like, if you know, you know. This is... I like... I've been a gymnast. I was a gymnast for 20 years. I've been in the sport of gymnastics for 25 plus years now, which is insane to say. And this vault leaves me absolutely speechless. It is so comical to me to know what has to happen and what has to be required for her to be able to do this vault. Like it's, it's absolutely insane. We're going to break it down. I'm so excited to do this. Okay. So first and foremost, the most important thing we need to start off with is the run. Listen here, gymnasts, if you don't think your run matters going into a vault, you're very mistaken. Your run is so important when doing vault and floor, but especially vault. So that's what we're going to break down on her run first. Watch her run in normal motion and notice how she accelerates throughout the run. She starts off going as fast as she can, and obviously she's going to gain momentum towards the end of the vault. So that's the first important thing is noting she is in a full on sprint to that vault. Now, how are we going to have a good sprint? Well, she has to be extremely strong. She has to be extremely quick twitched muscle, if that's even a word, but very, what I like to, to kind of, the analogy is very track-like. If gymnasts, in my opinion, can learn to sprint like a track sprinter, I think you would see a lot of vaults improve and they would be a lot more powerful. So, and that's kind of the vibe that she gives me. She has such a good run because she's so extremely strong and obviously throughout the years she's figured out a technique that at least works for her she may not have a sprinters technique but she's good enough to where she has a very quick sprint and it's able to allow her to do a year chinko double pike and, and it's a good enough sprint that gives her enough power what she needs so moving on from the her uh the sprint now we're going to talk about her hurdle right here so she's a righty. So she's going to take a step with this left foot as her last step, as you see right there. And then she's going to put that right foot down. And as she puts that right foot down, notice how her left leg is already going to start kicking to start her needle kick. So the needle kick, which is this whole position right here, that's what's going to help create even more power going into your round off. So if you don't have a strong leg push off the ground, which is right here, the push off the left, or I'm sorry, the right foot right here, that's the right foot pushing off the runway. If you don't have a good push off of that runway and you don't have a good needle kick, as you see here in her left leg, that round off's going to probably not go as well as it could. So moving back and focusing on the arms, notice how she starts pulling her arms up to her ears and she is gunning towards that hand mat. Her eyes are right there to the hand mat and her hands are stretched trying to create a very long body to go into this round off. Now, going into the round off, notice at some point she has to push off her foot where both her hands and her feet are essentially in the air. She has one hand down barely, but that's how quick and good she is of getting that round off over. And she's essentially has, she is starting to turn her chest and her shoulders to completely face the vault as you see right here. So it's very important out of this mountain climber and the reach that we are turning our shoulders and our chest and our head to almost be facing the board by this point where that leg is directly above our head. We have a straight line almost from foot to hands and our chest, stomach and head are turning towards the board. And after that, now we're going to start finishing with our hips around. She has to complete those hips all the way around and it has to be done quickly or the vault's not going to go well. So after she does this whole half turn, now look at where her eyes are, perfectly pointed towards the board, or she's looking at the board because her feet have to land there. She needs to be seeing where her feet are going. 
So she, her eyes are on the board. She has her body almost completely turned around and she's starting to bring those feet together. Now notice as she gets off her hands right here, look at where her feet are. Her feet are still in the air. She has to have a good push off, block off, however you want to define it off that hand mat in order to then get into this position that we're seeing right here. She has to get stood up on the board somehow. That's not going to happen if she leaves her hands on that hand mat for too long. So she gets off that hand mat quick right here. And as she goes to the board, she's going to drop her hands ever so slightly down so that she can yank her hands backwards to start the set into her back handspring. So in my opinion, and having done this vault for 10 years by the time I retired, this is also the event I'm an All-American on. Absolutely love this vault. So in my opinion, the run, this part of the hurdle, and then this part in the round off, if you're not going to do those right, don't be doing a Yurichinko because the Yurichinko really relies on that strong run, the hurdle, and the round off. And then the back handspring is just going to be a result of what you did in the run, the hurdle, and the round off. So moving on from the round off, see how she drops her hands. Now she's going back into the back handspring. Look how stood up she is. She has to lead with her hands going into the back handspring. If her arms are in front of her chest, She's not going to be able to get back to the table quick enough for her to be ready for the entry. So her hands are absolutely perfect. No shocker, it's Simone. And as she reaches her hands back, she's doing it so quickly that her hands are hitting the table right here. And it's keeping her feet down because that's how fast her hands got to the table. Her feet were still facing and slash on the board from the rebound, which is so good. Because what does this allow her to do? It allows her to be in this position right here look at where her shoulders are pointed look at where her chest is pointed look at where her eyes are this entry is what gets her the height to do the double pike but again this entry revolves around the sprint the hurdle and the round off so after she hits that table and her feet stay down which is very essential you have to leave your feet down in the urachinko um at a point so that you are able to now do this so as she hits the table and she starts bringing her feet up ever so slightly, so we want to leave the feet down as we hit the table. And then as we're hitting the table, we're going to start to bring our feet up slightly, but it's really just kind of a natural thing that once your hands have hit the table and you have that momentum going and you've worked on leaving the feet down, you're naturally going to have the feet come up because obviously your body's connected. So if the feet are going, you know, or the hands are going, the feet are going to follow because you're basically tied together. But What's allowed to happen is because she leaves her feet down long enough that when she hits this table and allows her feet to come up, now she's going to hit at this really tight block right here. And then from there on, she is letting physics be physics. She's going to take this entry with her shoulders, be as tight as possible, and physics is going to block her straight up, all based off of where her shoulders were, her chest was, her head was, all put together with the power, the angle, all of the above. So now her feet, having gone from down to horizontal, which is right here, now her feet are going to go up in a perfect handstand. If you are a level six or seven that plans on competing a Yurichinko timer and your optional meets coming up, this is what they want you to do. This is what you should be going for in the block. Because if you, that this, you have to block at vertical to get a zero angle deduction. Okay, and this is what they're talking about. This is a perfect prime example of what you should look like. So here she's blocking perfectly into a straight handstand, which allows her to get the utmost optima, op, optimal height to go into her double pike. So now as she moves on from the block, she goes to that handstand. Now notice where her feet are. So her feet are like in our peripheral or our perspective they're like in the middle of the top of the row right now notice where her chest comes her chest goes higher than what her feet were so do you see how the feet are kind of setting the bar of where the rest of her body needs to come up going into the double pike to allow her to have enough height so she's not landing on her head in this double pike so this is absolutely this is just absolutely asinine that she can do this like this is so hard and there's not a lot of room for error 
especially in the entry, because if you're past that vertical, you're just taking away height from yourself where you're probably going to end up on your nose, your chin, or crunching your ankles in the double pike, which definitely hurts. So again, blocking those feet come straight up. She's picking her chest up in order to be at the same height, if not higher than her feet. Now let's go back to after the block and how important this part is. So we focused on her feet. Now let's focus on her hands and chest. After she blocks in vertical, she's not really doing a Yurichinko double pike. She's doing a Yurichinko two and a half pike, which is even harder than what she, you know, than, than just the double pike. And, and this is why I say that. She's upside down right now. She has to pick herself halfway up to then start the double pike. So essentially think of it like an opposite of a diver. A diver starts on their feet. They do two flips, land on their head. They're essentially doing two and a half flips. And that's exactly what she's doing. She's doing two and a half flips out of the Yurichinko. So as she blocks, she has to work so hard out of this block to then pick her chest up as you see her doing now. So now she can start the two flips, one and two. And look how she lands. She lands pretty well. Let me tell you if I tried this vault, I wouldn't be here making this video. I'd be dead. Okay, so the fact that she can even land that well is way too impressive. Okay, I'd be sitting somewhere in a grave. So the way she lands is actually pretty good. And they, that's probably where the bulk of her deductions even came from. And that's not even that bad. Maybe a tenth, I mean, you can take, actually, I don't want to say the deduction because I don't know what fig rules are. But let's pretend she's in developmental program. The chest down is up to two tenths. It's a body position, whatever. So that's a, a two tenth deduction, 99% sure. So that to me screams like a tenth and a half. Okay, if I'm taking a tenth and a half on a landing of a double pike, I would be absolutely fine with that because again, we could be taking more than that because she could have her chest on her knees right now. So the fact that she's able to land this well of the double pike and she steps backwards, meaning she didn't under rotate, that's it's so impressive and it's 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 so so difficult. So she's landing, has a pretty good landing that chest is up and even takes the step back. She does go out of bounds on the vault runway, but again, we're just happy to be here and we're happy we're making this all the way to our feet. Who cares about that line at this rate? And if anybody wants to come at her for going a little bit crooked, I double dog dare you to try a Yurichinko double pike. Anyway, just absolutely insane. And I know she's worked really hard on this vault. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you guys learned something. Let me know if you guys like these types of videos. I'll definitely do more of them. But don't forget to like and share this for me to help support my channel. I really appreciate everyone that supported me thus far on this channel. Definitely want to keep this going. I know it's been a while, but YouTube, it takes time. And girl, I'm busy and we got stuff to do. So, <laughs> but thanks for watching. Hope you guys learned something. And I'll check you guys out in my next video. Bye.